So Euler has def uh, or scientist Euler has actually provided a theorem which actually tells us when a given graph is Eulerian. So every balanced and strongly connected directed graph is Eulerian. That is the Eulerian theorem. But what does it mean by balanced and what does it mean by strongly connected? We have to look at it. So in general, there are two conditions for a directed graph to be an Eulerian. First condition, as we said, the graph must be strongly connected and every node in the graph must be balanced. The concept of balance is uh, actually with the concept of nodes. So if particular graph is prone to be Eulerian, then it's very straightforward to actually assemble the genome. First, we take reads and construct a, a directed graph based, uh, based on what we studied in the de Bruyne graphs. Then take that graph and show that graph is Eulerian. If it's a de Bruyne graph, we can actually show that it is, it, is, uh, it is an Eulerian graph. But in general, when we start from reads to a directed graph, we have to show this directed graph is indeed a Eulerian. And if we show that it is indeed Eulerian, then our task of finding genome assembly is a straightforward because we have to find an Eulerian path and then use the algorithm which we have described in the previous uh, class to get a complete sequence. Hence, the genome assembly problem is a simple from reads to directed graph and then find the Eulerian path on that constructed graph from the reads. It looks very interesting and straightforward. Let's look at those conditions which we have to verify before we actually say that particular directed graph is an Eulerian. So first we are looking at a strongly connected graph and disconnected graph. So what is it? What is the connectedness? Graph is fully connected if it is possible to reach from one node to another node or reach one node from an, any another node. So if you look at this particular graph, if I take choose this particular node, I can reach this node by following this particular path or walking on this path. If I want to go to this node, I have to further walk and go to the GT. I can come back to the same node also. In this particular case, it has a cycle also. Now let, let's look at the another example. Here, if I want to go from this node, which is AT to AA, there is no H. So I cannot travel from AT to a, AA node. Hence, this particular graph has to be the is not connected graph. Remember that the subgraphs are connected. No, subgraphs also not connected. Here also I can go from AT to GA. However, I cannot travel from GA to AT. Hence, it is not strongly connected graph. This is the first condition for, for any graph to be Eulerian. So we have to first verify it is strongly connected or not, or we have to find out whether there is a path from, uh, such that I can reach from one node to any other node by walking on the edges. What is the next condition? Graph must be balanced. What does it mean? For every node, in degree is equal to out degree. 
This is particularly case of a directed graph where in degree and out degrees are defined. What are the degrees? Number of incident in, in, uh, in edges as well as number of outgoing edges. So, for example, in this particular graph, if you look at node number 4, there are two directed edges going in and one directed go edges going out. So, for this graph, this particular node itself is not balanced. Similarly, if you look at the AT, it is also not balanced. However, GAT and TGA are balanced. In is equal to out, in is equal to out. However, that's not possible for node 3 and 4. And, and hence, this graph is not balanced graph. So let me summarize it for node 1. In degree and out degree are equal to 1. Node 2, in degree is equal to, and out, de out degree is equal to 1. However, node 3, degree 0, out degree is 1. Similarly, for node 4, in degree is, for no node 1, in degree is equal to out degree is equal to 1. For node 2, in degree is equal to out degree is equal to 1. For node 3, in degree is 0, out degree is 1. For node 4, in degrees are 2 and out degree is 1. So, as we discussed, therefore, the graph is not balanced, it is an imbalanced graph and hence this, it is not an Eulerian graph. And this can be verified uh, easily. Now, let us look at the other graph. The conditions for the Eulerian graph here as we discussed, is must be the balanced one. Let us look at the another example. Here we have four again nodes and we have a, for example, node 3 in degree is equal to, out degree is equal to 1. For node 4 also in degree is equal to out degree and henceforth. Hence, for all the nodes, we have in degree is equal to out degree is equal to 1 and at every node, we have verified that in degree is equal to out degree. Therefore, graph is balanced graph and in this graph, this Eulerian path as well as Eulerian cycle exist. Hence, this graph is indeed an Eulerian. Now, let us look at the problem number 2. In this problem number 2, you have 16 KMRs and we have drawn a de Bruyne graph for this particular system. And if you look at very carefully this particular graph, you will find out that this particular node and this particular node in degree is not equal to out degree. Here you can see that there are two in degrees, however, there are only one out degree. Here there are no in degrees, no edge going into the this node, while there is a one out degree. Hence, this particular graph is not balanced graph. But can we do about some, something about it? So, node 80 degree in degree is equal to 0, out degree is equal to 1. Node CG in degree is equal to 2 and out degree is equal to 1. So, what we are going to do about it? is the question. The graph is not balanced. Now, I am going to show here that for this particular de Bruyne graph of example problem number 2, Eulerian path exists but not the Eulerian cycle. Here we can see that I can go from AT to GC 
cc C, and then I will move to CG and to GC. So you can see that there is an Euler path which going from this node to this node to this node to this node node going back and going forth this one 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 and this one so if you can see that we have cover and this one. so if you can see that we have covered from 80 to CG all the ages once it means that Euler path exists however there is no Euler cycle so this kind of graphs are called nearly balanced graph a graph is a nearly balanced graph if an Euler path exists between two different nodes A and B and all but except the nodes A and B are balanced one. So here our A and B nodes are node 80 and CG. If you look at all other nodes, they are balanced. However, CG and AT are not balanced. How can I make a nearly balanced graph a balanced graph? A simple way is I will draw an edge going from imbalance to balance. So here I have actually out degree here is now added one out degree. Earlier it was only one. Now the out degree are two. Here the out deg uh, in degree was zero by making a CG to 80 directed edge, I have added one in degree. Now this graph is a balanced graph. Each node in this graph, every node in this graph has a in degree is equal to out degree. So now question is how to assemble genome using the Dibring graph. So here we are going to do the same thing which we have done earlier. We'll start with a traveling to ATG, which we will add. Then we'll travel to this one, TGC. So we'll add see here then we are going to from here to gcc so we'll add one c here ccg so we keep adding the last element of that particular camera here it is c then again i am traveling to gcc so again c then i'll go to the Travel over CCT, so T, then A, G, STC, so C will be added, then A, we'll add another A. Uh, traveling this, so another way. G, C, and the last one is G. And this is what is our reconstructed genome sequence, and that's what we have actually constructed using an algorithm. So we have seen that using the Eulerian concept or Eulerian path concept, we can construct genome 
from its cables. So what are the way we can actually use deep blue interior uh, graphs and construct the graph uh, Euler and graph cycles. So what are the algorithms to find Euler and cycles in the graph is another question. So there are several famous algorithms available like Flutie's algorithm or Hellholzer's algorithm which allows you to find Euler and path or cycles in the graph. The other algorithms which exploit the data structures and construct a efficient graph algorithm for finding out Euler and cycles in a linear time. So we can use some of these algorithms to find Euler and cycles in our De Bruyne graphs. During this journey, we made us many assumptions directly or indirectly regarding the reads available to us. And these assumptions may, not, may be violated in the practice because sequencing is not perfect, there are experimental errors, etc. So what are those assumptions we have made and we have to actually be aware of those assumptions while reconstructing genome assembly. We assume that all KMRs are error-free. Another things we assumed in time to time that we have a some kind of circular sequences. If we have to handle linear sequences, we have to actually look at Euler and path. When we have circular sequences, we can look at Euler and cycles. So these are small distinction we have to have to take care. Another bigger challenge is handling unsequenced region of the genome. If we miss some of the sequence of genome, then it is very difficult to actually apply some of these algorithms because it may lead to disconnected graph because there is a one part of genome is missing and we are trying to construct a deep brewing graph which will be definitely disconnected. So we have to be aware of that and there might there are strategies to actually handle those kind of things. Another most important part is many parts of the genome consist of repetitions uh, which complicates the assembly. Let me use a simple example here. If I have given you this four camels from the data, unique camels, then there are possibility that this is one possibility or there is a possibility that this is also a possibility. Remember that I have multiple reads. So sometimes it is possible that the, there is a repetition of some part of genome here TACG is repeating to TACG again and we may mistake this repetition as a multiple copies of same part of the KMERS and we end up getting a wrong sequence or partially sequence, correct sequence genome or part of the sequence. So these are some of the assumptions and challenges in genome as, uh, assembly problem. There are new algorithms, extension of these algorithms to handle them. Some of them you may study in a bioinformatics course and there are published work where you can study this course which will be provided in the notes as a references for this particular topic. I would like to thank you with this.